Hello everyone, you often ask me how you can make your videos look more unique and filmic as opposed to a standard digital look from the camera. Therefore, today I want to show you how I use my favorite DaVinci Resolve effects to make my videos look less digital and more visually pleasing. And we'll be turning this shot into this one. I would also like to remind you that my course, Mastering Color Grading in DaVinci Resolve, is still available at a promotional price. So hurry up and sign up by clicking on the link below this video. It's a very comprehensive course where you can learn DaVinci Resolve's color management, primary and secondary color grading techniques, and advanced creative techniques that can help you build multiple film looks. The course is suitable for both beginners and more professional users, and you can practice using high-res footage that I am providing with this course. What is more, I will be adding to it a lot of masterclasses in the upcoming months, and if you join now, you will have an access to all of them for free. But now, let's move to today's tutorial. And this is our clip for today. This one was shot with Blackmagic camera in lock, and I've already converted it to Rex Venom 9. And if you want to properly learn color management, if you want to know how to correctly convert different camera formats to Rex Venom 9, please join my course where I am thoroughly explaining it. And here I have also performed a basic primary color correction, as this is not a topic for today's tutorial, so I have already prepared my clip. This is before and after. I have just adjusted the exposure and contrast, so we can move straight to the Resolve effects. So let's hit option S to create a new serial node, and we'll start from manipulating midtones details. So I will call my node MD, and here we have our midtones details slider. And what this control does is that it basically increases or decreases sharpening in the midtones, where most of our skin tones live. So when we scroll it to the left, we are getting a dreamy and soft look. This is before and after. And when we are pushing it to the right, we are adding more sharpness. Like this. And I want to add a little bit of softness to my clip, so I will change this value to around minus 30, as I want a very subtle change. And this is before and after. I love it. But this is just a start. So let's create another serial node. And here we will be manipulating blur radius. So let's call it blur. And let's move to the blur tab over here. And here, when we move this slider up, we are adding more blurriness to the clip, and when we are moving it down, we are adding more sharpening. This feature is different to the Midtones Details feature, as it affects the whole clip uniformly. And what I sometimes like to do to make my clips look less digital, I like to add a tiny bit of blurriness to them. So I'll go up to 0.56, a very tiny change. And I also don't want to affect the face of the model, as it will look like it was out of focus. So I'll go here to my power windows, I'll grab the round power window and I will place it on the face. And here I will turn my highlight mode on to be able to adjust the mask properly. Okay, and let's turn the highlight mode off. And now here I will reverse my mask, so the blur affects only the outside part of it. And then here I will track it. Okay, perfect. The next effect I'm going to apply is called Glow. So let's create a new node and let's label it. And then let's search for Glow here in the Effects tab. Okay, and there's loads of different ways we can use the Glow effect. But for this clip, I will decrease the Shine threshold to the max first. Then I will scroll down to the Composite mode and I will change it to Soft Light. And this is what we've got before and after. But I want it to be more subtle. So I will manipulate the shine threshold a bit more. I will push it up. Then I will change the spread just a bit. And then here I can decrease or increase the opacity. 
so I'll decrease it just a bit and you obviously feel free to play around with these controls in your own time as every clip is different and this is before and after. And also, the glow effect always adds a little bit of warmth to the clip, but you can also manipulate it over here, changing relative spread red, green or blue. So again, feel free to play with it. Like this. And then I'll maybe decrease the opacity even more. Okay, before and after. Now let's create another serial node, and this one will be my halation. And in the resolve effects, there's an inbuilt halation effect, and I have created a video about it. This video is available to watch if you are a member of my channel. But today, I want to show you a different way of creating halation, and we will do it using the effect called edge detect. So let's grab it and let's drop it onto our node. And here, Let's first make sure that the mode is set to RGB edges. Then let's select Edge Mask Overlay. And let's open the Global Blend tab in case you want to use it. But first, let's manipulate the sliders over here. So first we have the edge width. We can increase it or decrease it like this. So I'll increase it a bit. Then we can modify the brightness to get more subtle effect. And then we can also modify gamma. But let's go back to the edge width. And let me actually zoom in so you can properly see what's going on here. So look at the arm over here. And look what's happening when we are moving the slider. You see, we are adding a very subtle halo. That adds a very unique and dreamlike feel to the clip. And this is before and after. And let's zoom out. And again before and after i like it so i'll leave it here and now let's move to another resolve effect called prism blur so let's create another node and let's label it and let's search for the prism blur in the effects tab and this is how the effect works as a default it basically creates a chromatic aberration but we need to obviously adjust it. So first, by moving this point over here, we can change the position of the effect. So we can choose from where we want our prism blur to start. So I'll move it to the face of the model, as I don't want it to be affected too much. Then here, we've got blur strength, but I will set it to zero, as I have added blur before. Then we have the aberration distance, and here again, I will increase it just a tiny bit. And let's zoom in. This is before and after. And then we can also modify the aberration strength. And let's zoom out. And at the end, we can add a vignette if you want to. But I will skip it as well. And now let's disable all the effects so you can see how they work with this clip. This is before and after. A huge difference. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe. And don't forget to enroll my course by clicking on the link below this video. See you soon.